So I didn't realize that I was different until second grade. Like, it sounds dumb because it's like, duh, my mom's white and I have a brown dad. And it's like, yeah, I'm not colorblind. <laughs> yeah. So I knew that I was different. Yeah. Um, but I have a very specific memory. Welcome to the podcast with Kylie Nichols. I made the unlikely transition from stay-at-home mom to CEO of Nickel and Suede, a leading multi-million dollar fashion company. At Nickel and Suede, we empower the everyday woman to step into her story more boldly, one life-changing accessory at a time. The goal of this podcast is to inspire you through my story and the stories of other powerhouse women to live the best version of your life. So grab a notebook, grab a pen, and get ready to get started with Kylie Nichols. Hey guys, happy Friday. Welcome to the podcast. It's good to be back. And today I have a great guest I'm so excited about. I am here today with Lexi Bradley, our (laughs) social media community manager here at Nickel and Suede. Hi, so glad to be here. Yeah, welcome. (laughs) Thank you. First time on the podcast, first time on any podcast, actually. Awesome. It's a big thing to start. (laughs) Hey, I'm honored. It's going to be good. Yeah. I'm glad to have a guest and glad to have you. We've had a big week mm-hmm. together anyway, so I feel like this will be just yep. a great way to kind of wrap it up. Yeah, I feel like there's no better, no better way to get to know someone than going through something crazy and challenging. And we've hit a couple of those things over the fa- you know, past few months that I've been working here. Totally. Yeah. yeah. You kind of came on yep. um, in a perfect, perfect storm of working hard on new things. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I actually came in the day after no the day before everything shut down um for covid so it was really interesting it was a good monday of a hey here meet the team this might be your desk we don't know (laughs) get your login stuff figured out and here you go (laughs) yeah you were a trooper it was it was fun (laughs) yeah so yeah i typically kind of start and i'm like okay so guest how do we know each other Mm -hmm. uh how did we first meet yep and um for us, it was interview, right? Yeah, yeah. It was March um, 16. There was a rainy morning. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, good memory. No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea what the day actually looked like. <laughs> but um, so our first day of meeting was actually my job interview um, for Nickel and Suede, which I was so excited about. But before that, I had been, you know, a, like I knew Nickel and Suede as a brand. Um, I'm from Kansas City, so I was very familiar with you guys. Um, and then I was, you know, stalking Kylie as one does when they're going to interview for her <laughs> job. <laughs> and as I got to know you, you know, I saw the application. And I was like, this is great. These are all the things that I'm passionate about, that I'm interested in telling women, you know, how to be bold and courageous. And also all the things that I just love to do, like creative wise. Yeah. And I was like, this is great. And then I got to see what Kylie's all about. And I was like, holy moly, I have to get to know her. She's so cool. Like, um, even down to having a similar dog, like we both have puppies that are like the same age. Yeah. Um, I have a seven month old Bernie's mountain dog and Kylie has a, what's it called? A -a Bernadoodle, right? So it's half Bernie's mountain dog, half poodle. Yours doesn't shed as much. So lucky. (laughs) I think that's so great. (laughs) Yeah. I honestly envy that so much. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I remember when you applied and I was looking Mm -hmm. through all of your great resume and skills and things. And then I was like, and we have a similar dog. This is great. This This is is great. great. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And you came in for an interview and Mm -hmm. we instantly connected on, I think, values were a huge yes. thing that we connected on right. um, in your interview was like mm-hmm. what's important to us and mm-hmm. your title is social community me- social media community manager yeah. which was very intentional as yeah. far as like I didn't just want to bring somebody on to manage our social media right. I wanted to bring somebody on that was going to take care of my community yeah and community is something we've really tried to build in Nicholas way like mm-hmm. with our BFF Facebook group on Instagram like we know we have (laughs) 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 by the way that group is amazing Um, but by having this like we have a great amazing customer group and so we've been trying to bring them together and how like create this community and so um, I'm not enough of one like I can't just I can't take care of this community myself right. and so I'm like it's I need community I need 6,000 yeah people. <laughs> yeah plus all the customers who aren't yet in that one space yeah. but like we have this community we really want to 
take care of and that's mm-hmm. that's more important than just posting on social media yeah, if we can right. post all day but are we bringing in people to our community and mm-hmm. how are we managing that so that was really my intent for the role and so then when yep. you came in and you were like speaking to all the things that are important to me I think that yeah. was where it was just a really great like connection and this is where we see this going yeah right the community aspect is huge I mean um I'd been doing social media for years, you know, in different creative outlets and all of that. But my favorite thing I think about it is serving a community um, and empowering people through your platform and having difficult conversations on your platform. Um, and I've gotten to do a lot of that already joining Nickel and Suede. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. thankful to be here, thankful to keep growing and learning from such an awesome boss. So my favorite thing about what I get to do here is really just getting to know the heartbeat of the Nickel and Sway community, um, getting to know in individual women on our platform has been really cool and hearing their story. I consider myself, yes, a content creator. I love getting to do artistic projects and all of that photography, drawing, you know, that's kind of my roots. But um, more than that, I love storytelling. And I was a journalism major at the University of Arkansas, Woo Pig. Uh, <laughs> um, and so hearing people's stories and sitting with them and empathizing with them is something that I'm really passionate about. Yeah. Um, and then being able to share that with an audience is, is just such a privilege that I get to do that as a full-time job. Like, how do you get to do that? I don't know, but <laughs> feel really honored to be here. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And I think that all of those things really added up to like, this is going to be great. This is perfect for our yep. community and for social media. So yeah, we totally sit right before COVID happened, which mm-hmm. feels like an eternity ago. <laughs> but it really does, right yeah. before that happened, we said, okay, great. Like, let's start. And then you just started working from home and yep. here we are. Now yep. we're back in the office. And um, then like he's like kind of alluded to, we've had a really big week with uh, Black Lives Matter mm, and right. all the racial conversations mm-hmm. and um, yep. injustices and things that have been going on. Yep. This week has just been, mm-hmm. basically we've been in constant conversation about it, you which and I, great. which yeah. is great. And it's right. been, it's opened up a lot of conversations mm-hmm. here at our headquarters and for the brand yep. and for you and I, and mm-hmm. you came on with really a heart for, Diversity, yeah, diversity in the first place that I, like that was that's a word that stands out to me from our first interview mm-hmm. like how can we bring this to the brand and you yeah. brought even in like images and said this is what I where I see like we could mm-hmm. really push the brand too and so yeah like yep it just feels really like serendipitous almost in like mm-hmm. a like hey we're 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 being asked and we're like you want to do this I want to do this like this is and then it was just kind of put on a platter for us yes, and you're like this is where we're going here we go let's yeah. be challenged in this let's grow let's listen and let's move forward um, yeah. with empathy and compassion yeah yeah so it's been so yeah that's been you've been through COVID and then now yep. we're through this we're working on this mm-hmm. week and right right it all totally aligns with, I think, some of the things that your heart is for, which we're going to talk about yep. why that is. And, <laughs> and talks with Kylie and Lexi. <laughs> totally. <laughs> but then also just like we're all about pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone. We're all about learning new things. We're all about trying new things and just saying, you know what, let's get uncomfortable. Let's be authentic. And when hard things happen like COVID, then we can do it. We're going to handle this. Right. We're going to figure it out. Yeah. And right do it with empathy, do it with grace, do it like as Mm. best we can. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, when, when are you going to grow most? You know, it's not when you're in your bubble Mm. doing the things that you're used to, um, when you're in your comfort zone, it's when you're completely out of that and you're facing obstacles or you're facing a difficult decision or you're facing, you know, really big emotions or you're facing, you know, something that's going on in our nation right now. Um, and just wondering what to say, how to say it, um, how to stand, and, you know, we're kind of all out of our comfort zones, but it's such a good and healthy thing for each of us to face. Yeah. And I'm glad that I get to do it with you guys. Yeah. Well, we're glad we have you here to, to do it with us and to figure <laughs> it out with us because I think that's l- the position literally we're all finding ourselves in is figuring it out every day. And it's just a day by day process. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But yeah. Day by day. <laughs> okay. So um that just does kind of lead me to like okay so tell me let's tell me tell me more about you tell me more about you growing up as a kid yep um this is on youtube but it's also just on itunes like so 
some people can see us. We have matching earrings on today, by the way. We're we do. Our Citron <laughs> size <lovelies>. large. <laughs> but some people can't. So yes. what's your ethnicity? What's your, like, how did you grow up? What did, and tell me, and yeah, start a little bit more. Yeah, I feel like those are almost two different conversations. Like, <laughs> go for truly, it. Truly, <laughs> I, there's so many. I know, really. So growing up as a kid, you know, I was saying I grew up in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom's from Lenexa, Kansas, and then my dad's from Chicago. Um, and he actually came here to go to nursing school at KU, met my mom, they fell in love, and now they're both nurses, and it's really cute. They work at the same hospital, whatever. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, but I grew up here, and I'm an older sister, and I have three younger siblings. They're not so young anymore. They're in college and high school now. Um, but yeah, growing up as a kid, I mean, we... We didn't grow up with too much. Like my mom, she's a stay-at-home mom, mm -hmm. and then my dad, he um, he was a nurse, but they didn't make too much back then because he was just kind of starting out, you know. And so um, we didn't even have cable <laughs> until I was like in sixth grade. I don't Me, think we never. <laughs> yep. And uh, you know, so I really grew up with my siblings. Like yeah. we were so close, which was such an I I love that we got to form that bond. Um, simply because we didn't have a ton of technology and other options. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that we would do growing up is we would go hang out. We had an unfinished basement like most people in Kansas did. Yeah. Um, and we had a ton of moving boxes. And one of the things that we loved to do was build like a kingdom or we would choose like a city or we would choose like some like fantasy castle world or whatever. Yeah. And we would build it out of these like moving boxes and play the role and so it was so much fun that's just awesome. um and i think that's where i built a lot of my creativity honestly was just being in fantasy world all day and um yeah it was really fun but we're all really close now as a family so that was great that's awesome <laughs> yeah yeah um ethnicity wise i feel like oof, we're gonna just dive right into unpack a couple things you know may as well i feel like you know this is the week to just dive in <laughs> you guys i feel i tell kylie this every time but um whenever i leave her office we have these one-on-ones at work and whenever i leave her office i said thank you for the therapy session because really i'm not a boss like i'm a therapist that's not uh, i don't know about that but <laughs> she's both and it's great and it's very healing um yeah so i would say Okay, well, let me just introduce it. Um, my mom, she is white, and then my dad, he's full Filipino. Um, my grandparents, they immigrated over. My grandma, she grew up with nothing. She um, actually sewed her underwear out of rice bags. They had like 12 children. She grew up on a farm, just very poor background um, in Cebu in the Philippines. And then my grandpa, um, he didn't have dad and he just had a hard upbringing and um, he actually became a doctor though through all of that and then um, married my grandma in the Philippines and they moved over to Chicago and then here I am today um, <laughs> which is a pretty cool story and one that I'm very grateful for yeah um, but I really didn't so I didn't realize that I was different until second grade like it sounds dumb because it's like, duh, my mom's white and I have a brown dad. And it's like, yeah, I'm not colorblind. <laughs> yeah. So I knew that I was different. Yeah. Um, but I have a very specific memory. Um, yeah, when I was in second grade, I had a crush on this kid. I won't say his name, but <laughs> he was really cute. And he started, I guess, like dating this one girl who is just happened to have blonde hair and blue eyes. Mm. And that's when comparison hit. And Interesting. it was the first time that I was like, whoa I'm different and I like looked down at my arm and I remember being like I have brown skin and I have you know I have this dark hair and I have really dark eyes and I don't look like that girl huh. but he chose her and that was the first time I think I felt less desirable interesting yeah and I um, started you know making that connection of because I'm different I'm less desirable mm. yeah and it was like um, to be more desirable, I have to blend in yeah. and I have to, you know, put on my white side and I have to portray that I'm white in order to be accepted and loved and mm. have be crushed on back by other yeah. boys. You know? yeah. <laughs> that was a big concern for me in elementary school. I Second why. grade, I feel like is kind of a memory forming yeah. pocket of time for, for me, it was for yeah. like as a girl and as like wanting to be liked and wanting to be like accepted and mm -hmm. like, yeah. I have like pretty vivid memories from second grade of just feeling like 
whether yeah. rejected or accepted. Yeah. And so it was hard to have that attached <laughs> to like your skin color yeah. or like, like I really even remember stop. Like I stopped wearing light colored shirts because I didn't want you to could like tell my it skin to stand your, out more. Uh, and like, I'd put a ton of sunscreen on. Like you see the yeah. girls and I'm like, do you want to lay out? And like, no, like I want to, <laughs> like, it's so sad. Like now yeah. I don't really care. I yeah. want, I mean, I put sunscreen on cause I want beautiful skin when I'm a mom, but <laughs> yeah. other than that, like back then it was like, no, I need to be like my mom. Like I need to look more white, yeah. even though I loved my dad and I was so proud of him. And, yeah. um, it was just the little things when you're a kid, it's hard to understand fully why you're kind of, yeah. 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 Why are you processing things a certain way? Yeah. That's really yeah. Uh, interesting that you can look back on it now. And I think mm-hmm. good that you can kind of connect the dots for yourself. Like maybe even like have like empathy for your second grade self. Yeah. But also like <laughs> She's a little lost. I know. Well, <laughs> we all are in yeah. second grade, but right. yeah. Yeah. I, so funny thing. Um, well, not so funny, but my, my mom, so she's white and growing up she had, before she had a box diet, cause you know, you get gray hair when you're older, no shame. Yeah. yeah. Um, but she had blonde hair and blue eyes and, and she had four dark babies. And so whenever we would go, she never fit in, she never did like truly. Um, but whenever we would go out to, you know, the grocery store, we go to a restaurant. It was just my mom and us. Yeah. Everyone was like, Oh, did you adopt your kids? You know, oh. we, she never yeah. like, they never, ever said to her like, Oh, like beautiful children. They must be yours. It was always like, Oh, they're, they must be adopted because they don't look exactly like you. Interesting. And, um, my dad's side of it, whenever we go with him, obviously we look like him. So no one asked us about being adopted. Right. Um, but as I got older and he got older, I don't know if you guys know this or if there's any Filipinos out there, Asians listening to this, but they tend to have nice skin, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so my dad, he doesn't look, he's, what is he now? He's like 49, but he looks so young and growing up, like being in middle school, high school, he still looked really young (laughs) and it was, oh, people thought we were dating. It was terrible. Like I have this one story of, we went to um, a mall and my mom was shopping. And so my dad and I were just hanging out and we went to um, this engagement ring store, like, you know, just like a diamond ring store or whatever, just to look around. Cause I'm a girl and you know, even in eighth Someday. grade like, to appreciate yeah. those things. Yeah. These things, um, elementary Lexi obsessed with boys, whatever. Um, but let's see. Yeah. So we were walking around and then the sales lady who was working there, she came up to us and was like, so when are you guys getting engaged? No way. And it was a moment where I was like, I can never be alone with my dad Let again. Like die. that's disgusting. He's my dad. Like, <laughs> and of course he's like, oh wow. Like I'm so confident. I'm like so young. young and I'm over here like throwing up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But we still get that <laughs> Yeah, truly. And I, I'm not, I'm not embarrassed by it anymore. I think it's hilarious, but that, that happens often. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's so funny and also not funny but yeah oh. yeah I I have another one even when um so my husband now uh we had been long distance for a while and yeah. when we were still in college um I had taken a picture with my dad and his roommate showed him on Instagram. He showed him the phone. He's like, dude, I think she's with someone else now. No. Like, I think she's dating someone else. Uh. And Dalton was like, that's her dad, bro. Like, <laughs> come on. So it still happens. That's cute. <laughs> to this day. Like, have to explain myself. But So how, I mean, did your mom ever feel like she didn't fit in with her own family that she had kind of created? Was it, have yeah. you ever had any conversations with her? Yeah. You know, I never totally like got like an uncomfortable side from her. I think she was just yeah. at the point like these are my kids. Yeah. And I don't care what anyone else says. I love like, that. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. I'm gonna She's rock mom. it. Like yeah, yeah, I'm their mom and she was never like timid about it. Like she was always showing us off. You know, like every every mom does. Yeah. But <laughs> do you feel like you get her get some of your like empowerment and your like yeah. confidence in those like you oh. heard for that from her? Yes, one hundred percent. Um, both my parents, but yeah. she is a, she's a spicy woman and, that's, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> I pre- she's a mama bear. Yeah. Um, and I really appreciate that about her. She really does stick up for the people that she loves. Yeah. And I think I'm, I'm definitely to the same way to a fault almost. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but I love that. yeah, I, I love her. Love my family. <laughs> yeah. So you talked about 
second grade memories? Have you ever mm-hmm. had any other uncomfortable or difficult experiences? Yes. <laughs> it's not like humorous, but yes, I, I really have. And I say that because it's almost so obvious, you know, yeah. That yeah. you grow up different that you're going to have yeah. interesting experiences. Um, one of the most common things I think that's said to me um, is they'll say, so Lexi, where are you from? And I'm like, Kansas City. And then yeah. they say, no, 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 no. Where are you from, from? Yeah. And anyone who's different, you've probably gotten this question. And then I say, oh, Olathe, Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like a little bit stunned. And I have to say, no, no, no. My, and then, t- you know, share the story of my background. Yeah. Um, I'm not always rude like that. I <laughs> Sometimes I answer politely. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just interesting. Um well, and I've seen that like through conversations this week online and seeing a lot of a lot more conversations happening around people of color and black mm-hmm. color. And, you know, it just what are what's a good way to have these conversations and that that's not a question that yeah is appreciated. It's not helpful. There's. Yeah. And so, yeah, it makes sense that you've been asked that a lot because I think that's mm-hmm. just an, a way that people sometimes yeah it's like that word vomit it's like yeah you gotta get rid of some of those things. right we do. <laughs> we do um if you don't know what to ask just ask you know hey what's your background what's yeah. your ethnicity what what's your nationality yeah um yeah just you know things like that we can all learn i don't blame anyone for asking me that but that's just a common thing that's yeah. like you shouldn't have to be the one that's yeah. like oh i know what you mean yeah let me, let me do the work for you it's like yeah let's ask a better question so yeah. i love that those are that's a better question to ask right and i i need to do that too too, in so many different situations I'm still learning I'm we still asking do. we're all yeah yeah exactly um also I think so a lot of other things that have gotten said is like you're attractive for be or like you're Asian but you're attractive mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. um wow you don't have slanty eyes you don't look like a real Asian mm-hmm. you know and I think that when that one hit me a lot because I already felt like I didn't fit in, you yeah. know, like, um, no one ever thought that I was Asian. They uh, guessed everything in the books, like yeah. Italian, Native American, yeah. you know, everything, um, Latina, yeah. Uh, yeah, everything else. And so, um, I already didn't know what community that I belonged to except yeah. for my family. And so I think that was really tough being like, well, I don't necessarily fit into the f- Filipino you know community because like though like my family is and I have hung out with a bunch of Filipinos and whatnot but um I don't speak Tagalog which is you know the language of the Philippines one of them um and I didn't grow up there I didn't I haven't visited there still and I still get that question and I feel like sad because I want to be there too um but I also don't necessarily fit in like the white category even though I grew up in white suburbia I was still like um, I look at my skin and that's just not who I am, you know? And so yeah. I never truly belonged. I was just this n- hybrid, <laughs> almost this new thing. You see, that's really eye opening to me, which is kind of the point of all this, right? Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. cause I wouldn't know that because yeah. I am white and mm-hmm. I've always belonged right I mean I've got my own insecurities and my own reasons that like yeah. all of our self-consciousness tells us we don't belong yeah. all the time right like as women and as mm-hmm. just dorks and as yeah, like whatever right. like everything else there's always good. the enemy telling us that we don't belong yeah. uh, but I I wouldn't know that, yeah. that that's like a constant battle that yeah. you would face and it, so right right like, I like that like hurts to me to be like mm. But that makes so much sense. Like yeah. now I understand better that like, yeah, I could see how you wouldn't feel like you have a community, but mm-hmm. you should have a community. I like, know. You belong here. You're yeah. from here. Like, of course you belong. Right. So right. what is it that's making it so that you don't? Then that's, I think, all these conversations. Yeah. Right. right. I, I don't it, know. So it, right. really eye-opening to me mm-hmm. because to me, you totally belong. Yeah. But the, there's a lot of people who don't. Yeah feel that way or don't right. make it that way or maybe we unknowingly don't make it that way and that's kind of the yeah. point too is we unknowingly mm-hmm. make it so that you feel like you don't belong I would just say as a learning tip like yeah don't put your expectations of what a stereotype or what a nationality or ethnicity should look like and put that on someone yeah because I don't fit the mold you know yeah. and I always felt like 
I'm less than or I, I'm lacking something. Like yeah. I can't fully claim that I'm Asian, but I can't fully claim that I'm white. Right. Um, well, you, yeah. I, I see. I can see that as you say that. Yeah. But even I couldn't see yeah. that before maybe or mm -hmm. if we had just met on the street or like our first interview I right. wouldn't be like oh I see Lexi as a person of color mm -hmm. like right I just see you as a great cute awesome Aww. talented thank you. Lexi <laughs> thank you and yeah but like all of your experiences add up to who you are too mm -hmm. and part of that is who your parents are and where you yeah. came from and all of those things and that like, right I don't yeah yeah I totally get that now I absolutely treasure being different and yeah. I, I lean into that I love that as part of my story mm. uh, but this the way that I'm telling the story is still from you know back then the ways that I was feeling the mm. things that I was processing right um, now I know I belong yeah. and I want others to know that they belong as well doesn't yeah. matter what you look like or um, what ethnicity you are like you have a place in this world and you matter like that's so important for me to share but um, even like standardized tests, you know, you take th all these little things that you would never think of, but mm -hmm. truly like, um, you know, you get to the end of the test. And I think for me is the hardest question on the test because there's the answer or you have to fill out like, what ethnicity are you? And it would say yeah. white, Asian, Pacific Islander. And I'm like, what do I want to be today? Like, <laughs> and then they put other, and that's, I think what I started circling more. Um, but even that word other makes you feel derogatory othered. almost, right? Like, and that's what it is today. It's other. Uh, um, some I see that says two or more races. And I think I put that on. The also feels so, weird. Like yeah. to me, that would feel weird to check. Like, right. <sighs> I'm just not a big box checker anyway. So <laughs> I think it was just like, ugh, what am I? <laughs> yeah, well, I think here at Nichols, we try to get rid of boxes we and do. we're breaking out of those. So I could see you not subscribing to a box. Yeah, right. That's great. It just, it just became humorous. I was like, hmm, yeah. what do I want to be today? Well, yeah, <laughs> these don't matter anyways, yeah, clearly. Yeah, exactly. Mm. This doesn't shape or form who I am at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's so. mature of you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Still learning. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, what, I mean, I guess now that you've, gone through all those things mm -hmm. you know and like what do you think has shaped you into your perspective today or what you know what is your yeah. perspective today that you want to share it's okay a big question huge question um man okay so I can't answer that completely honestly without sharing yeah um my love for Jesus and my faith that's brought me here yeah um so I've been opening up on this podcast and talking about you know some of my insecurities that stemmed from my ethnicity and not knowing who I was um but in high school it wasn't just like the lack of knowing like my community and um my place as a as a mixed person but it was also like how I looked and I think it stems from like wanting to please others like I would try to be more white to please others back in elementary school or whatever um, but in high school it looked like my outside appearance mm. or my grades or um, being with a boyfriend and, and being affirmed by him and so a huge part of that, it kind of developed into, in junior year, it developed into an eating disorder mm. because I wanted to um, have control over part of my life. And I got praised for, you know, looking good or for exercising, for having goals that I could meet, um, but it wasn't healthy. And I honestly didn't claim it. Like I didn't, I didn't understand that I had an eating disorder, but now I, I know that I did. Yeah. Um, I would say things like, oh, that girl over there who's like really skinny and she doesn't eat her lunch, like that girl has an eating disorder. I don't, I'm healthy, I'm fine. Like I just feel sick or I'm just not hungry. Um, but when you don't eat for seven days, like it's not because you're not hungry. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. there's there's an underlying issue there. Um, so I had all these insecurities, even though on the outside, no one could ever tell, like my mom, my dad, like, you know, I was saying how close I am to my family. Like they never knew, like my friends never knew. I had a boyfriend for like three years. He never knew. Um, but I went, I stepped into college. I went um, to rush for a sorority because I thought that was like the end all be all thing that was going to be part of my life, whatever. Sorry. If you're part of a sorority, like that's so awesome. And I like, so glad you found your community there. But for me, it just wasn't me, but I tried to, you know what I was saying, like, please others yeah. be someone find that I'm not yeah. find my place. And I didn't, um, until I found Jesus. But, um, so anyway, it was still going on there 
And I had that come to Jesus moment, as they say. There's um, a reason it's called that. There is a reason it's called that. But I just, it's the memory that is so vivid, the most vivid memory in my life. Um, and it was just this moment of knowing what Jesus did for me, the love that he has for me. And I so clearly just heard like, Lexi, I know every single hair on your head. I created you. I made you. You are so worthy and so valuable, not because of what you look like or anything that you're going to do. Like you're enough and I'm enough. And it was like everything came together at that moment. Um, and actually like admitted that I had an eating disorder in that moment and wrote it down on a piece of paper um, and got help. And um, it ended right there. Actually, I never struggled with it ever again, which is like a miracle in itself yeah. because it had so much bondage on my life for yeah. about two or three years, actually. Um, and so in that moment, I knew that my calling and my whole purpose is to express to other women like how valuable they are and how worthy that they are, not because of anything that they've done or anything that they're going to do, but simply because like they have a God that's created them so beautifully. Um, and it doesn't depend on anything that they, what they look like, you know, and that's played out in my life so much ever since that happened in college, my freshman year. I mean, look where I'm working now. Like, look at the messages that we get to send now. I'm sitting here in a podcast with Kylie Nichols, like what the (laughs) heck? (laughs) And, um, you know, Nichols and Suede is all about empowering women. It's just like all the dots kind of connected for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm so thankful that I get to express that, you know, within my church, within my friend group, um, leading Bible studies, like that's my mission and that's all I want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I think it's such a, like you're so resolute and so like strong and confident in that. Like mm-hmm. I, that is just your heart. And I love yeah. that that like shown, shines through so strong mm, Thank you. and like, you were just as clear in your <laughs> first interview with me, like with that message yep. as you are today. And like, yeah. I think that's what we need to hear more of and mm-hmm. that more yeah. women need to hear that. Right. And, um, I still do each day. All <laughs> women, like we, yeah. we all need to hear that. We all need more of that. We all need more yeah. of the, like, you're worthy. We all have our potential. We all can go after what we mm-hmm. like our personal, Right. We each have our own personal thing we we can go do. Yeah, exactly. And we want to empower everybody to feel like they can go and do that. And so your, you know, message to go share is similar to mine, but we both have different ways of doing it. Exactly. Um, Yeah. But yeah, I love that you're so clear on that. You're so confident in that and that we have that voice to be able to help push that through to women all over the world yeah yeah it's like tangibly now what does that look like it's like you know bringing back like my ethnicity into that it's like I um I grew up never seeing a lot of women who looked like me in the media like when did you see an Asian woman as the protagonist like when did you see this like hunky like cool Asian male as the romantic lead you know like we saw 16 Candles and um I think the character's name was like Long Duck Dong and it was like Asians were always portrayed as yeah. nerdy or foreigners or, funny. or just like the scapegoat for funny yeah. comedy. Mm-hmm. Like it was never like an intentional um, character that was created to like shine through and like empower other young Asian or, you know, mixed women. Yeah. Um, and so I just felt like that lacked and even looking at like brands and like ads and yeah. um, going to Target with my mom to buy clothes. It was like. I'm not one of those girls. Like, can I wear this? Like, I'm not one of those girls. Like, am I beautiful? Yeah. And like that really just like stuck with me and resonated with me. Um, but when I was actually before, like when I was applying for Nickel and Slate, I went to the about page and I told Kylie this yeah. in my interview actually, but, uh, the woman in the picture was Asian. And I was like, yeah. yes, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> like there's representation. Yeah. It just really was like, I have to apply for this job. Like, this is so cool. Um, and so something that like, I'm really passionate about, and I know Kylie is too, and the brand is too, and everything stands behind it, but, um, is just be like showing more diversity, you know, whether that's color, whether that's body size, whether that's age, whether, you know, everything in between, like we want young girls and women to feel like they can see themselves, you know, they can see themselves in our photos, Um, And they can see their story, 
you know, and yeah. what we're saying, not just because we want to show diversity, like it doesn't end there. It's, it's bigger than that. Yeah. Um, and so something that was really cool that we got to do is Kylie asked me to help out with the photo shoot. She said, do you have any models? We need, you know, more models. He said, no, I, I don't actually know a lot of models, but I have this beautiful friend who is an amazing jawline. Um, she did. And, <laughs> and she's half Vietnamese. And it was just like so awesome for her to be a part of that and for me to witness that. And it was the first photo shoot that I got to work on and do with Nickel and Suede. She did um, awesome too, by the way. She's, she's amazing. She'd, nev- she'd like hardly ever modeled before. She's never modeled before. Baloney. She's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> she's definitely trained classically, I swear. Yeah. If you go to her website right now, I'm sure she's like one of the first yeah. photos that you'll see. Yeah. Um, or like if you come to her store, she's the backdrop of the store. Yeah. She's blown up huge yeah. in the store right now. Like, Hannah, I think this could be like a career or like a side job that you do. Yeah. yeah. That was wonderful. It was so great that you were able to bring that in and... Like we both acknowledge and yeah. it's constantly like, okay, how do we keep doing this going forward? And like, what does it look like? And it doesn't mean it gets fixed tomorrow. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean we know the answers of how to, right. like, what does it all look like? And we've got like a dream, but yep. dreams can take time and it takes like mm-hmm. chipping away at it little by little. Yep. And um, so with limited manpower, mm-hmm. limited resources, yeah, like, right. We want to make things look amazing and look big and, and authentic and be real to yeah, us. And right. we want it to be consistent and move forward and share the message and get really honed in on that. And mm-hmm. I, there's just only some hours in the day. But mm-hmm. I, I love that like this is really the, the heart, like getting at the heart first and yeah. then how do we do it is the next discussion. And that's really where we've been sitting and talking and dreaming yeah. and right. working. So, yeah, I'm glad that helps me because... I'm such a dreamer and visionary person that sitting down and being held accountable to what we say that we're going to do is like very refreshing and challenging for me. Yeah. Yeah. And we just finished another photo shoot and we, we did try to be really intentional about the models we cast. Exactly. Yep. Is there more work to do? Yep. We're going to, we're working on that in the next shoot. Like, okay, how can we include more body sizes or how can we include more this or that? And what does that look like? And Mm -hmm. it is just, it's constant mm. work and yeah. um, dialogue and yep. what can we do? What do we want to do next? Yeah. So I think I really appreciate too coming from Kylie. That's like you guys like own it and it's not, you're not ever saying like, Oh, I'm perfect and I have it all figured out and look at my brand. Cause like we yeah. know everything that we're doing and it's like, no, we're all figuring it out together. Yeah. No one's perfect. And I really appreciate that. It's like we're invited to get into the mess of things together, yeah. you know, and figure things out. Um, so that's just one thing we're figuring out as a brand. But yeah. as people and as, you know, an employee here, I, I feel like we're invited to have conversation. We're invited to say, oh, man, <laughs> I'm messing up or I need help. It's it's really refreshing. Yeah. yeah. Very authentic. Well, and I think... Um, having you on the team is adding like one more voice and one more Mm -hmm. like experience and story. And so that helps like add to like the full conversation at the table. And so it's like, okay, what other voices, what other experiences can we bring to the table that help like make bigger decisions happen and Mm -hmm. um, move our COO that came on that recently he he's from India. And so it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, there's other voices and stories and like parts of the world and experiences are coming. And so it's been cool for me to see. And I realize this sounds like very white and like small, like (laughs) bubble ish. Like I'm, I, I literally, they called Liberty the bubble growing up. Like I, Oh, I own that. Like I live in, the, I grew up in the bubble for sure. So, I didn't know Liberty that. was called the bubble. Wow. Um, but like the, the reason for diversity is not to just say like, Hey, we're, we, we have our diversity merit badge. Like that's exactly. not the reason for it. The reason for it is that there's more people represented and their mm-hmm. stories add up to the bigger story. So we can do good for all the people yeah. and all the people is a lot of different kinds of people. Yeah. And if we don't have their stories at the table, we don't understand where they're out. walking. Yeah. We don't understand what it's like to be in their shoes. We can't figure out how to best serve them because then you and I are trying to figure out how do we best serve these people that we have no way to interact with. And it's yeah. like, if we had a representative at the table, we could just ask them, but we don't. And so that's the missing piece. And like, I think why diversity 
like, oh, okay, it's making yeah. sense now. Yeah. I get it. And right didn't get it before mm -hmm. starting to starting to make s more sense and yeah. as like <laughs> whatever as white as that sounds yeah. like okay fine I'll own that like a lot of things that I that could come out of my mouth could sound that way mm -hmm. and that I think is just where yeah. it's like that humility comes in and saying yeah. you know what I I would I'm happy I'm so glad to hear your story and like so yeah. glad to hear that like Aww. that there's more the story your story helps me know what it's like to be in your shoes or you know yeah. was like or whatever so oh, I love what you said there about humility like it really does take humility to lead a team <laughs> like, I we literally our headquarters is in the bubble I swear it's in the bubble of the USA yeah. and so it takes it's going to take a lot of work for us to like reach outside of that and yeah, us right. acknowledging that is going to be important mm -hmm. so yeah that's good yeah it's like who are you asking to sit at the table with you yeah you know, I think that's a good question we can all ask ourselves, like what you're saying about who do we have at the table? It's like, well, who are you who are you asking to come sit at your table? You mm -hmm. know, um, that's how we listen to people. Yeah. yeah, that's what my friend was saying to me today. She's like, who are you listening to? How are you listening to them? And all those things. That's good to know. Yeah, so, yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so many good discussions we could have. Yeah. But I'm good. Yeah. Go on forever. <laughs> all right. Well, let's just do a quick couple quick questions. OK, um, <laughs> let's see. Um, what are you most proud of? my husband oh <laughs> I know, he's awesome <laughs> um what's the scariest thing you've ever done okay so in February I when I wasn't working full-time I bought an expensive ticket to go to LA um, where my best friend lives and we actually recorded a video um, with two producers and talked about a brand that we have been wanting to start for a couple years now which is really scary because putting you know more than anyone else putting your passions and um, your ideas out there is very vulnerable because they might get shut down or people might not agree with them or love them. And so, yeah, that, that was part. <laughs> that's awesome. Love it. Um, what are you doing right now that's making you nervous or that's like putting you out of your comfort zone? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, putting me out of my comfort zone. Woof. Working here. <laughs> Good. Can I say that? <laughs> my job, my job is done. Yeah, uh, what's the best advice you've ever been given? Um, one of my favorite. Well, it's not advice, but it kind of is advice. But one of my favorite verses is says, um, it's in Psalms, and it says, "Let all that I am wait quietly before the Lord, for my hope is in Him." And as a not very patient person, <laughs> I have that's kind of something that I have to tell myself every single day. Love that. Yeah. What uh, motivates you? Um, well, let's see, creativity, um, being artistic, um, my husband telling me that I can do it. That's cute. I love <laughs> He's that. great at supporting me. Yeah. What would you tell your 18 year old self? Stop being interested in boys only. <laughs> <laughs> I really was like so obsessed with, well, one boy at the time, but like truly I needed to tell myself that. <laughs> Break up with him. <laughs> that. Good advice. Thank you. I probably needed the same advice at 18. Yeah. Um, and what are you most looking forward to in the next year? So um, one thing is our lease ends in September. We're living in an apartment, Lenexa. And I'm just excited. We have a dog. And I'm excited to one day, you know, have a house and have a backyard and have people over for dinner. And like as dumb as that sounds, like I'm just something simple that I'm really looking forward to. That's great. I love it. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's it. You did great. Thanks Thank for you. coming on today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I feel like we learned a lot about you and got a lot of great advice. And um, thanks for sharing your heart. Yeah, thanks for the therapy. <laughs> <laughs> As always. <laughs> yeah. So we'll uh, see you on Nickel and Suede social media. Yep. And uh, can find you in the BFF group too, I'm yes, sure. Yes, you can. Lexi if, Bradley. If you're in there, <laughs> you'll uh, you'll know she's in there too. So. Sure. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening today to With Kylie Nichols. I hope that today you felt empowered to take one more step towards living the best version of you. Tune in next week for another episode. And in the meantime, you can find us elsewhere on the internet. You can find me on Instagram at Kylie Nichols and at Nickel and Suede. You can also find us at nickelandsuede.com. Thanks so much. And I'll see you next time.